Nestle's Quick for the greatest tasting chocolate milk. And those famous Nestle's chocolate bars present Space Patrol. <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, commander in chief of the Space Patrol. <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy have entered a manufacturing plant on Jupiter to capture a fugitive. Right now, in a large, empty storeroom, they find their search blocked by a locked door. He must be in the next room, sir. I hear the noise. Let's go to work on this door. It looks pretty rugged. Hey, what happened to the lights? The darkness will help us. I'll let down. Another part of the room. There are two of them here. Get the ray guns. I thought those sounds. We've got to get them before they get us. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure The Tattooed Atom. Hi, fellows and girls. This is Captain Tufel. I've got terrific news for you today. The makers of Nestle's Quick want you to have a man from Mars totem head. Exactly like the kind Commander Corey found. It's a super spooky totem head, more than 12 inches high. It fits over your head and disguises you so well, even your own mom won't know you. It's brilliantly colored with a beak nose, fang teeth, a face in front, and an extra face in back, and it has magic forehead vision. Now, this is a special secret device that works only for you. Yes, you can see out, but nobody can see in. Honest, nobody can see in. Nobody can tell who's inside the man from Mars totem head. So you can have loads of fun fooling everybody. And gang, it's easy to get your totem head. Because I'm sure that you must have a can of Nestle's Quick in your galley. You know, there's no chocolate milk in the universe that's as good as Quick with its Nestle chocolate bar flavor. Well, now here's what you do. Send the lid from that can of Nestle's Quick. Or a tracing of the front of a label... Together with your name and address, and 25 cents to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And don't forget your 25 cents. And if you missed the address, get a pencil because we'll repeat it later. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Tattooed Atom. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are at the most closely guarded scientific center in the solar system, the Arkhaven Research Laboratory on the planet Mercury. Investigating a leak of secret information, Buzz is asking the cooperation of Gene Satterley, a young scientist in the electrochemical section. Gene, you're aware that classified information is somehow being smuggled through the security network here at Arkhaven. I have heard rumors, Commander. In spite of every precaution and use of scientific detection instruments, information is being smuggled out of Arkhaven. I'm hoping you can help us find out how. But, Commander, I'm a scientist, an electrochemical engineer, not a crime investigator. I know. But you and other scientists and other divisions might help us locate a blind spot in our security system. Will you cooperate? Of course I'll help, Commander. In fact, I have something of interest to show you, something that has puzzled me. What is it? Uh, in the next room, please. Come on, Hank. You'll find some papers on the desk at the rear of the room and a chart of the distribution plan for this section. Oh, uh, one minute. You go in. I want to get some notes out of my files. All right, Gene. Pat, let's look at that distribution chart. It'll give us an idea of... Commander, he locked us in. Evidently, we've located that security leak. He acted kind of nervous. Should we try breaking down the door? No, there's a phone there in the desk. Hey, we can have the guards grab him before he even gets out of the inner ring. Now, wait, Hap. Let him get away. And we can have him followed. Don't touch the phone until we've had a chance to get past the first guard. A few hours later, Gene Satterley walks down a side street at Mercury City. Mr. Satterley. I, I'm afraid you've made a mistake. No, Saturday, you did. And you left Ark Haven. Just keep walking. The surface tried just around the corner. You've got an appointment. 
Gene Satterley's escort holds the muzzle of a ray gun against the scientist's ribs during the long drive to the residential section of Mercury City. When the surface car finally stops before a large residence, the scientist is nearly overcome by fear. His companion takes Satterley into the house, down a hall, and then through a door into a large room that's utterly silent and completely dark. Suddenly, a shaft of light, nearly blinding and brilliant, strikes Satterley almost with the force of a blow. The man with the gun steps back into the dark silence, leaving Satterley squirming in the pool of light. Why have I been brought here? Is anyone in this room? Speak to me. There is nothing to fear, Satterley. Who are you? I am Polidor. Polidor? You have been paid well for getting secret information to my agent. But by running the way you ended your usefulness to me. Well, I had to. Commander Corey was on it. If you have followed my orders, there is nothing to incriminate you. But perhaps you haven't to take my orders. Yes, I, I have. I have many spies at our kingdom. I was informed within five minutes after you left the lab. As you know, most men have no difficulty in locating you. Now, tell me the truth. I am telling the truth. Then where is message 58K? I, I, I sent it out of the plant in the usual way in marked atoms of mercury. It was never received. Well, it must have gone astray. Maybe the space patrol... Don't be stupid. The space patrol could give the mercury every test in the book and still not discover our secret. Isn't that? Yes, but... Then find that mercury. Your life depends on it. Understand? Just who are you? For all you know, I am just a boy. I will be standing behind you in the dark. Or I may be on Pluto. No one in the universe has seen me as holy law. Yet hundreds of men. Oh, really, the men who brought you here have never seen me. And there's a space phone here and amplifiers. Do you think so? Do you think? You are in this room. Are your footsteps? Or is that Mogan? I'm way back here. Perhaps I'm standing next to you in the body in that circle of behind. No. It's impossible. What did you just imagine? You don't know, do you? Now, will you recover as his five-eighths came? I'll do my best. Mogren, take him away. Elsewhere, millions of DUs from Mercury, the Terra 5 streaks toward Jupiter. As the giant planet looms larger in the nose port, Cadet Happy looks up from a sheet of spacer phone reports from the Space Patrol Security Lab on Terra. I don't get it, Commander. Gene Satterley has a perfect record, not only at Arkhaven, but as far back as you want to go. And there was nothing at the lab to connect him with anything crooked. Why did he run away? Well, he's guilty of something. That's very evident. But he's not a confirmed criminal. His method of escape shows that. How, Commander? Well, a true criminal type of Satterley's intelligence would have planned several alternative methods of escape in advance. Oh, like the phone in the room he locked us in. Yeah, he had to put that out of commission. Exactly. He had almost 30 minutes' notice that we were at Arkhaven and wanted to talk to him. Could have stopped him easily if we wanted to. Too bad we didn't. Look how he vanished in Mercury City with one of our agents just a few yards behind him. That wasn't so amateurish. Sadly, he must have had professional help that time. Now, our best chance to get a lead on him is to check his family and friends in Jupiter, particularly they sat his father. You sadly wouldn't be fool enough to contact his father now, would he? Worth a try. On the outskirts of the main manufacturing section of Jupiter City is a small shop with a sign reading, Joseph Satterley, Precision Machinist. Buzz and Happy have been trying to explain the purpose of their visit over the whir of a lathe. Yeah, there now. I can hear with that thing going on, but it seems like nobody else can. Well, like I told you, Commander, my boy's on Mercury with the Arkhaven Laboratory. Yes, Mr. Satterley, I know. Do you have any close friends here in Jupiter City? Well, there's... Girl, Karen Lorimer. Karen, my, my boy at Gates. Uh, Commander, there's something wrong. Gene isn't in trouble with you. Mr. Sadly, I know your son's excellent record. 
Yesterday, I went to Arkham to ask him to cooperate with the Space Patrol on a security problem. Uh, you saw him yesterday? Our cadet Happy and I were talking to him. He suddenly pulled a very clumsy trick on us and fled from Arkham. Nice son. Ran away from I can't believe it. I'm sorry, but it's true. Well, Mr. Satterley, can you think of anything to account for Gene's behavior? Uh, no. But I'm sure he's done nothing wrong. Maybe he's overworked or breakdown nerves. Have you heard from him recently? No. Two days ago, a package arrived. Small, but quite heavy. I opened it. Found this. A metal bottle. It is a container of mercury. Yeah, and it's stamped Arkhaven Labs. Section E3? It's being sent the section. The container has an official seal on it, still unbroken. This is government property. Did he ever send you anything like this before? Oh, no, never. If this contains only mercury, it's worth five or six credits at the most. Surely taking a few pounds of mercury isn't a serious crime? No. But diverting a sealed container out of regular channels is serious. If this is only mercury, then I'd agree with you that Gene is suffering from nerves. It's too stupid and pointless to be a crime. Well, it must be the strain of overwork. When this container is open and analyzed, we'll know whether you're right, Mr. Saffron. Oh, now, if you don't mind, I'd like the address of this girl, this Karen Lorimer. From Saturday's shop to Karen Lorimer's apartment is but a few moments' drive in a surface car. Leaving the sealed container of mercury in the dash compartment of the car, Buzz and Happy ascend the steps. You know, Commander, Gene's father may be right. A nervous breakdown would explain Gene's peculiar behavior. Perhaps. But in any case, we've got to find Gene before he gets into more trouble. Something I can do for you? I'm Commander Corey of the Space Patrol. I was told that Miss Karen Lorimer lives here. That's right. She and your mother are out right now, though. When do you expect her back? In about ten minutes. Would you like to come in and wait? Yes, thanks. Come on, Happy. I suppose I'd better introduce myself. Karen's mother is my aunt. She practically raised me. Oh, is that so? Oh, yes. The reason things are in kind of a mess here, the women are cleaning house. They offer to help move the furniture around. You know, the help the nephew. Nice of them. I uh, don't believe I got your name. Oh, uh, Ed. Ed Long. Commander, excuse me, but I think I'll step outside and get some air. I feel sort of... Happy, what's the matter? I... Uh... You believe the cadet is fainted? Here, Happy. Oh... Uh... You guys would never fold up. I take these weapons, gentlemen. Yeah. You'll be tired, aren't you? So weak you can hardly move. That's the end. I was fatigued by radiation. You've been getting it since you came in. That fatigue ray will hold you while I look for something. And if I don't find it, well, I've got a gimmick that'll make you talk. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Have you seen The Man from Mars? The Man from Mars has a weird totem head, a beak nose, fang teeth, a face in front, another face in back, and magic forehead vision, so he can see out, but nobody can see in. And gang, you can all be men from Mars. Yes, sir, Nestle's Quick wants all of you to have the sensational, super scary man from Mars totem head. It's a complete disguise that completely covers your head, makes you look like a spook from another planet. And wait till you see how magic forehead vision works. It's a special device that lets you see out, but nobody can see in. Why, nobody can even tell it's you inside your man from Mars totem head. Boy, what fun you'll have fooling and scaring all your pals. And it's easy to get your totem head. All you have to do is get out your big brown and yellow can of Nestle's Quick, the product that makes the best chocolate milk in the universe. No Martian ever had such a delicious drink or such a simple one because with Quick, there's no beating, no shaking. You just drop two spoonfuls of Quick into your glass of milk and swish it with your spoon. Why, Quick makes itself. Now, here's what you do. Send the lid from the can of Nestle's Quick or a tracing of the front of a label together with your name and address and 25 cents to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. That's Space Patrol, Box 686. 
eight, six, St. Louis, Missouri. And hurry so you can be... The Man from Mars. And now back to our space patrol adventure, the Tattooed Atom. Thinking the missing scientist, Gene Satterley, might try to contact his family or friends in Jupiter City, Buzz and Happy went to the home of Satterley's fiancée, Karen Lorimer. They were admitted by a man who claimed to be related to Karen. Suddenly, Buzz and Happy were overcome by extreme weakness by means of a concealed fatigue ray machine. Taking their weapons, the imposter threatened them with violence if he failed to find an unnamed object for which he was searching. Right now, a few moments later, Buzz and Happy shakily get to their feet. <clears throat> that fatigue ray must have turned my muscles into putty. I haven't got the strength of a wet noodle. I hope the effect wears off before that fake nephew comes back. Maybe he already found what he was after when he searched the apartment. He said he'd be back if he took the ray machine with him. Maybe he was bluffing. A surface car. Maybe he went out to search that. Come on, Happy. Yes, sir. He's not at the car now. He must have found what he was after. He'd come back in the apartment to make us talk. So what have we got in the car that he didn't want? Happy, what's the one link between us and Karen Lorimer? Why did we come here? Why, on account of Gene Satterley. But Open I, I the don't... car door. Smoke and rockets. The dash compartment. It's been cut open. With our own Atomo torch. Commander, the container of mercury is gone. Yes, and with it, old Mr. Satterley's hope that his son is nearly overworked. Let's get to Jupiter City headquarters. I'll send out a general alert on our pal with the fatigue ray. In another part of Jupiter City, there is sudden activity in the abandoned Goto Plastics plant. Working swiftly, a lone operator adjusts an array of instruments. Then, from a case, he removes a metal container and places it in the target area of a ray tube. The silence is broken by a strange voice that seems to come from every part of the room. Mo Grimm, what state do you so long? I'm almost ready, Polito. Mercury cylinder's in place. All right. But I'm so great. Check the image monitor. Definition is excellent, Polidor. Well, that does it. Now, do I send the microfilm through the usual channels for decoding? No. You insist indeed this time. We're in danger of interception. Thanks to the stupid behavior of Mr. Sackett. Yeah. Here's a guy who's smart enough to invent a method of marking individual atoms. He devises an electronic code system that nobody but us can detect. And he sidetracks a can full of secret information at Jupiter. I don't get it. That doesn't matter now. We've got the information. Now, since we have no more use for mercury, we can return it to you. Return it? What for? If you'll help him to use for me and keep him off our trail. Okay, I'll take care of that. And I'd better get off Jupiter. For he probably has every agent in the city looking for me by now. First, we must dispose of Gene Satterley. He's no longer of use to us and could prove dangerous. He arrived in Jupiter City this morning. Two of my men will pick him up and bring him here. You will get all the information from him that you can, and then get rid of him. In the Jupiter City headquarters of the Space Patrol, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy examine a laboratory report. From time to time, they look up at an object on a desk, a metal container full of mercury. I don't get it, sir. This guy goes to all the trouble to steal this can of mercury out of our surface car, and then we get it back with the seal still unbroken. And we turn it over to the lab. They break the seal and subject the mercury and the container to every known test. The verdict? Just ordinary mercury. And nothing wrong with the container inside or out. What about Karen Lorimer and her mother? Uh, they never saw that fake nephew, huh? No, they got a phone call to Gene Satterley one of them to leave him at the space plant. Oh. And, and that's how this fellow got them out of the apartment, to, to give him time to search it, right? Yes. One of our agents checked their story. Evidently, neither Karen nor her mother are involved in this mess. Space Patrol Headquarters, Commander Corey here. Commander, uh, this is Joseph Satterley, Gene's father. Yes, Mr. Satterley. It's about my son. Yes? I've heard from him. He's here in Jupiter City. Did he come to your shop? No, he won't. He asked for money, I told him I'd bring it to him. Are you positive it was your son? Well, it was Gene, all right. But he sounded so, so strange, so disturbed. Something is terribly wrong, Commander, more than I ever believed. I can tell by his voice. 
He isn't just afraid of being arrested. He's in danger. Dreadful danger. I'll help him all I can, Mr. Satterley. Where is he? He's at, at 43 Alpha Street, Jupiter City. I'm to bring the money at 2100 hours. 43 Alpha. You've got 40 minutes. Stay in your shop, Mr. Satterley. I'll keep that appointment for you. Corey, out. All right, huh? I'm not sure whether this is a rescue or a capture, but we're going after Gene Satterley. In the back room of the Goto Plastic Plant, Gene Satterley is securely bound in a chair while Mogren stands over him threateningly. I'll give you one more chance, Satterley. And I'm going to get buffed. Tell me how you marked these mercury atoms. Why should I tell you? You get rid of me anyway. I don't think it'd be a problem. I'll be here in a few minutes. You don't want anything to happen to him, do you? Look, Mogren... You and this Polidor, whoever he is, you forced me to be a spy. I've ruined my career and my life. Nothing you can do to my father could hurt him worse than that. There's still Karen Lorimer to consider. You wouldn't want her to suffer. Why, you rotten... <laughs> well, compared to what you're going to get... You're not just defying me, you're defying Polidor, the greatest genius in the universe. Then why don't you bring him here? Let him work on me. I know Polidor is watching us right now, listening to everything we say. My job is to get that secret out of you. It's my neck or yours. So talk! Shortly before 2100 hours, Buzz and Happy stalk silently toward a sprawling, darkened structure at 43 Alpha Street. Cautiously, Buzz tries the door and finds it unlocked. Ray guns drawn, they enter the building and softly close the door behind them. Ray guns. Fire toward those sounds. The room is empty. Oh, it's you. Where did you come from? Through the door. Well, you were firing at Phantom. Someone was in here when the lights were out. You heard them. Did you really? Now, you must be imagining things. There's one thing that isn't imaginary. Feeling of weakness creeping over you. Your arm's turning to lead. The fatigue ring. Oh, that's right. You've been in the radiation field for more than a minute now. The cadets all Give me that gun. Uh, uh, pull it up. Pull it up. Help me. Pull it up. Pull it up. Pull it up. Oh, what a neat left hook. Well, that fatigue ray sure didn't work on you this time, Commander. Not as much as you thought it did. Here, let me get you out of the ray field. Thanks, sir. I'll be okay. Commander, Commander Corey! Somebody's in the next room. You keep an eye on this fellow in case he comes to you. Yes, sir. Well, Saturday. Commander, you saved my life. This fellow, Morgan, he was he was going we to... We took care of Morgan. What about his pal, this Polidor? Come on, Saturday, speak up. There's someone else in the building. We heard him. We heard him, but he isn't here. I know you think I'm crazy, but it's true. Polidor is a demon, a master criminal. Get me out of here, and I'll tell you all I know. Later at Space Patrol headquarters in Jupiter City, Buzz and Happy question Gene Satterley. Then this is the way you smuggled secret information out of our cave, and you found a way to tag individual atoms of mercury with different types of radiation. Yes. When the mercury samples were scanned with certain rays, the marked atoms would discharge their radiation. The pattern was registered on microfilm and decoded electronically. And Polidor's agents could intercept shipments of mercury to scan them without... Breaking the seal. That's right. 
And then pass them on to their proper destinations. And without special equipment, nobody could detect these uh, uh, tattooed atoms. That's why Polidor was safe in ordering Moglin to return that container to you here at headquarters. What secret information was in that sample of mystery, the, the one you sent your father? Ironically, no government secrets, Commander. Just a full confession of my part in Polidor's scheme and the names of some of his agents. A confession? Well, then when Polidor decodes that microfilm, he'll be tipped off. I thought I could outsmart Polidor and the Space Patrol. But I waited too long and got in too deep. And I'm glad it's over. It's over for you, Saturday, but we're happy in The job is just beginning. Yes, sir, but how do we fight someone we can't see? Polidor's invisible. We can't tell where he'll strike next. No, but we can provide a tempting target. When Polidor does strike, we'll be ready. In just a moment, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure brought to you by Rice Chex and Wheat Chex, the bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages. Captain Two Bells, want to see something real keen? You bet, Space Patroller. Okay, then, take a look. Right here in my backyard. Wowee, a totem pole. A Martian totem pole. And mine's higher than any of the other fellas, because I got more totem heads. And Space Patrollers, you can build yourself one of these swell totem poles, too. You make them out of man-from-Mars totem heads. Stack them one on top of the other just as high as you want. The same man-from-Mars totem head you wear over your head with magic forehead vision that lets you see out but nobody else can see in. Yes, sir, those neat totem heads are more than 12 inches high in real Martian totem colors, red and yellow, green and black. And it's real easy to get lots of totem heads with rice checks or wheat checks box tops. Listen, gang. For every man from Mars totem head you want, send a checks box top together with your name and address and 25 cents in coin to Space Patrol, Box 686. St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 25 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. And now, an action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz is searching a cavern on Neptune, looking for Happy, who has been captured by an agent of the master criminal Polidor. Happy, where are you? Here, Commander. But I'm tied up. I'll be right with you. Pap, what's that? Just one of Polidor's tricks. He's trying to scare us with sound. Polidor, you are only a few yards from the pit death. And I am on another planet. But what? You will never reach the pit death. Commander, look out! The gate is closing! Happy! There is no use, Commander. I will bolt my prisoner. Sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, The Cavern of Fear. <laughs> Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Dever. <laughs> Other players were Bela Kobach, Norman Jolly, Ken Mayer, and Stephen Robertson. Dick Tufel speaking. <laughs> Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday for exciting action on Space Patrol! <laughs> Space Patrol was brought to you today by Nestle's Quick for the greatest tasting chocolate milk and those famous Nestle's chocolate bars. <laughs> Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your newspaper for time and channel. This program was broadcast for armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.